What is up teens from all around the world? This is Michael Aguirre here and Siabongam Thungu and we'll be bringing you our first installment of our monthly vlog. Come on. Basically in this vlog we'll be talking about our struggles and our victories to try to help you teens just get over the things that we go through as well. Because I think that we have the same challenges and we can help each other get over those challenges. Hey man. We just came back for an amazing conference in Southern Africa and where us teens from all around Southern Africa gathered and joined hands and learned about God. Hey Amen. Uh, you know, one of the things that we were asked to do for this conference is to prepare a short sermon on what we as teens had in our lives that were really bringing us down and separating us from our love from God. And we were asked to share about sins and struggles that we go through and how we use the Bible to combat those struggles. Uh, on that day, I shared about consistency with God consistency in my relationship with God and just getting daily quiet times in. In Acts chapter 17 verse 11, the Bible tells us that the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. Right. Why? Because they received the message with great eagerness and they examined the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. You know, this is something that I needed to grow in. I felt like I was being like a Thessalonian. I was content with where I was in my relationship with God and I wasn't growing. And so that's what I shared about on that Sunday uh, service. Hey Amen. I had to share about something that I think I'm the only person that actually struggles with this. But I had to share about purity. And uh, oh my goodness, it was flames. I would not even lie to you. Uh, but hey amen, praise God. We stayed up at like 3 a.m. and I was trying to make ends meet. But you know, I just came to the conclusion that I had to speak from my heart and what was really going on in my life. When we try to find freedom from purity, it's normally a selfish decision we make. Either to feel better about ourselves or to say, you know what, I have remained pure for A, B, or C. You know, I encourage you guys to find the reason for you remaining pure in God's glory. And trying to glorify God and trying to put Him first in your life and to know that He went through all those things so you can live the righteous life. I want to give you an example as well. There's a story of the, of the Samaritan woman who was sitting by the wall, right? Yes. And uh, Jesus uh, came to this woman and they were basically going on, I'm showing you all the story so I'm going to cut it short. And they were going on about the water and drinking of the holy water and, and the living water and all that stuff. And you know, I pray that today that we as teens can drink of the water that Jesus offers us. Because if we try to find contentment in anything outside of the Bible, we want to keep coming back for more. And if we drink of the water that Jesus offers us, we'll be you know, fulfilled from within and for eternity. Amen. So I just pray that uh, with our purity struggles, that we may be able to get our motives right and to just give all the praise and glory to God. Amen. Amen. And uh, we also had two other teens from a different region share about their tough decisions and making tough decisions for God. Uh, one of the tough decisions that my brother shared about was having to, even though he was going through struggles at school, he had to give up his school friends to be able to become a Christian of God. You know, he talked about how he was smoking, he was drinking, he was partying, and all that had to change for him to decide to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And how, you know, it was tough for him. Uh, his friends would mock him and, and he would go to things and, and his friends would just be there like, ha ha, whatever. Um, another sister shared about how her friends also, from moving up from Durban, uh, they, she struggled with making new friends and that, uh, you know, she would invite people out to church and they oftentimes wouldn't even come. And, you know, it was really touching because so many, well, every single one of us shared from our hearts and it really had an impact on some of the teams. Yeah, that's right. I, I just want to encourage you one thing, you know, the struggles that we go through, you guys are not going through these struggles in your heart. We face these struggles on a daily basis and it really comes down to storing God's word in your heart. If you look into the scriptures, if you keep the scriptures in your heart daily, you'll be able to combat these sins. Yes, even though you do know the scriptures, you still have a choice. But that's when I encourage you to get people to hold you accountable. If people know what type of life you're living, they will say, hey bro or sister, in, this isn't the way to be doing things and they will help you. Don't take that in a, in a mean way or that they're trying to bring you down, but take it as encouragement that they care for your salvation. Amen. to the man come on okay so Ooh. this weekend we obviously just told you about uh, what we did at the conference yeah and some of the highlights were the sharing that went on by the a guy called jocks from Cape Town he basically shared about how we can be sometimes spectators in the stands of God's uh, army that's right and how we need to jump into the, the field the playing field 
and just work at it. And he used the example of Daniel and how, you know, his father Saul was chilling and everything and Daniel was getting angry. He was getting angry at the people just not going forth and attacking the Philistines because they were putting pressure on yeah. the Israelites. So he and an armor bearer basically went out, trusted in the Lord, told God that if they got a sign, they would go and attack the Philistines. The rest of the story was basically how, you know, Daniel trusted in God Amen. and they conquered so many Philistines. Aid to the man. And on a more a broader note, on a, you know, not as serious, uh, we had an amazing decade done. So what we do at every conference is we have the conference on the main Saturday, like the morning or late to the afternoon. And then at night we party for days upon days. Uh, we had a decade dance this year. The theme was we want to do a dance for each decade that we've been through. And you know, it was so amazing to see people dressed up for their certain decades. And then what the teens did is we put together a seven minute dance that all the teens did from each decade, 50s, 60s, 70s, I'm sure you can count all the way to where we are now. And that was just so amazing because uh, the, the music was upbeat and we just, uh, we just had so much fun putting it together. being such an amazing group uh, we constantly encouraged by you guys uh, more than you guys can actually imagine it's just amazing reading all your posts and just looking at all your fun videos that you guys see on YouTube and just uh, all your amazing victories and just your family lives and we still appreciate your openness and just your eagerness to contribute to this group daily we really appreciate it so very much thank you very very much and to God be the ultimate glory amen